This one should be straight, this one should be sagging. Okay? The reason why this is straight is that this guy is our driver, A is our driver, right? This is where the rotation is starting from. So when this one spins, it is pulling the, the belt on this side. And this belt is the one that is making this guy to rotate. So when A pulls the belt, the belt goes round on this other side. There is not much force happening on this side. There is not much force happening. It is only completing the circle, but when it reaches this side, that's when it pulls this pulley. Okay? So the belt has got two sides. This side, you call it the tight side of the belt. That is where there is a lot of force. On this other side, this is the loose side but you shall use this word, the slack side. Slack means it is just loose, okay? The amount of force in these two sides of the belt is not the same. I can erase this part. You have written down this. Okay, now we are talking about the force in the belt. The force in the belt 
or force in a material, you, you call this a tension. Tension is a force in the material. If I take this marker, I pull it, I'm subjecting the marker to a what? A tension. It is having a, tens a tension or a force acting in the material. So the same thing, the force in this material, that's the tension. Force, what's the unit for force? Newtons. So same thing, the unit for tension is Newtons. So they'll tell you the tension in the tight side of the belt is so much Newtons, on the slack side is so much Newtons. But like I said, the tight side always has more force, more tension compared to the slack side. All right, the ratio, let me give this, let's say on this side I've got 1,200 newtons, on this side I've got 400 newtons, okay? Just as an example, the other one has got a lot of force compared to this other side. There is what you guys will be calculating, something called the tension ratio, TR, tension ratio, tension ratio, it is a ratio between the force in the tight side to the force in the slack side. Remember force, you can even say tension. Your calculations, just a second, will be the tension T1 over T2. I like to write uh, like this, TT for, for, for tight and TS for the slack side. Whichever that you choose, that's up to you. Okay? Now, when you divide this into that, it gives you three, right? Yeah. But ratios... You can even say it's three, it's fine. But ratios, they will usually give you three to or a number to another number. Okay? This does not mean it's 3.1. It is not 3.1. Three is to one. There are two dots there. And from this tension ratio, they will not always give you the two forces and ask you for the tension ratio. Sometimes they might say this belt drive has got a tension ratio of 3 to 1. The tension ratio is 3 to, to 1. Then they say the force on the slack side is, let me give it how much? 800. What is the force on the tight side? Okay, then you play around. Your tension ratio is given, they've given you the slack side, then they're asking how much force is on the other side. Oh, you're working your calculators. How much? 2,400. Do we all agree? What did you do? <laughs> 3 over 1 is equals to the tight side over the slack side. Then you cross multiply. Uh, T on the tight side and 1 still gives us T is equals to 3 times 800. Then you get the 2 400 newtons. If this guy is in newtons, your answer will be newtons. If it is in kilonewtons, your answer will also be kilonewtons. Simple stuff, right? When you go to good words, <laughs> there will be that that uh, the new modern counters where you put your your stuff, then the the, the tailor presses the button, then your things slide through. Which good words are you going to? Yeah. Okay, the one I go to, it has got that. You put your stuff on the belt. If let's say. These two pulleys were a distance apart, right? If I place an object on this belt, 
this object to move in a straight line. Okay? This object to move in a straight line depending on how fast this guy is rotating. Is it fine? If it spins fast, even this object will rotate, will move fast. The speed at which this object moves is in a straight line, which is just a linear velocity. Linear velocity, don't worry about this then. It is the velocity that we did in chapter one. Velocity in a straight line. The same velocity we did in chapter one. What is velocity? Ah. Rate of displacement. Okay. So, what is the unit for displacement? For velocity, sorry. Meters per second. The velocity that we are going to calculate for now, the units should be in what? <laughs> meters per, per second. Now, like I said, the velocity depends on the size of the driver pulling. Your velocity will be equal to pi t and the number of revolutions. Number of revolutions of the driver. Rotation of frequency, which we did yesterday. Rotation of frequency, number of revolutions per minute, right? But when you calculate for the velocity, make sure this is in revs per second. This should be in meters. Pi is pi when you calculate. If they give you revs per minute, you need to know to convert to revs per second. I think we did that. How do you convert revs per minute to revs per second? Okay. RPM to RPS divide. Okay. That is why in your exam, some question papers when they give this formula, what they do is they will put some dots here and write N over 60. Then they'll put it in brackets. Indicating that if your rotation of frequency is in revs per minute, then you need to divide by 60. If it is already in revs per second, just use it as it is. No need to divide by 60. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And make sure your diameter is in meters. In most cases, your diameter will be in millimeters or centimeters. Just make sure that your diameter is in millimeters. Why is it supposed to be in, mil in meters? Is because this guy the only answer that he has should be in meters per second. So this guy, if he's in centimeters, you change it to meters. If this guy is in revs per minute, you change it to revs per second, so that that second attaches itself here. We don't want meters per minute. We want meters per second, okay? And again, also, a reminder on that formula we wrote, If this guy is in millimeters, the other guy should also be in millimeters. Right? We wrote this formula. Just make sure that before you do your calculations, they should be in the same units. Rev, if this is revs per minute, then the, also the other guy should be in revs per minute. Okay, I hope we are fine. Okay. Let's put some values in here. Diameter of this one. Mm -hmm. 
frequency of A Okay, calculate the rotation of frequency of B and also calculate the velocity of the belt obviously in waves in meters per second you are doing two calculations number one you are calculating for the rotation of frequency of B and you are calculating also for the velocity of the belt